Hello and welcome. My name is Eric Neese and welcome to the webinar where we will hear about powerful document, document automation from Docs42. Today with me I have Lisa Pulsinger. She has a very strong background in international IT sales and strategic sales and marketing planning. Her role is that of a business technology evangelist at Docs42 and in, she's evolving and helping both cart, customers and partners optimize their document processes. And her knowledge about document automation involves several technologies across D365, SharePoint, Office, and even SAP. You can meet, meet Lisa excuse me, at various document events and conferences from all over Europe as a speaker presenting Docs42 and sharing wisdom about document automation in the broader audience. You can find her on Twitter at Lisa uh, underscore Pulsinger and also on Zing and as well as on LinkedIn under her name. Just a quick check if you can all hear me. Uh, Johannes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you okay. perfectly. Hi. Thank you. I'm also joined by Johannes Linder from Docs42. He's a techno lead technology evangelist with widespread knowledge about how automation and processes and optimization across different industries and frequently contributes his knowledge in international conferences, in the community, and webinars and blog posts. His job is integrating Docs42 into a variety of technologies and applications, D365, again, on Microsoft Office, Power Platform, SAP, et cetera, as well as supporting your customers and partners in implementing the projects. Um, you can find him also on Twitter at yo, that's at J-O underscore Linder, as well as on Zing and LinkedIn under his name. I think with that, we'll let uh, the folks from Docs42 turn that over. Uh, the chat is available to you throughout the meeting as well as to be able to submit questions and then there should be time for questions at the end. With that, thank you very, very much. Great, thank you, Eric, for the great introduction. And hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are from our site. Today, it's all about document automation from Dynamics CE, FO, BC, but also Teams, SharePoint, and Power Automate. When we as an end user, when we as a customer receive a document, we usually take it for granted that it's appealing, that it contains the right information and no mistakes, and that we can see exactly who it's from, like the corporate identity. However, if you're on the other side, if you're the one generating those documents, it can be quite of a struggle sometimes um, also within the Dynamics platform. That's why we're happy to show you some possibilities today. Johannes will introduce you to Docs42 and the challenges of document automation and how to solve them. And then I will take over again for the live demo. We've prepared an awesome lot for you today and uh, we hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. And please, if you have questions, ask them in the chat anytime and we will have some time dedicated at the end of the session for the questions and answers. Great, so much for, for my introduction. I'll pass it on to Johannes for now. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you joined our session today. I, if, you, if I look into the background, that's not because there's something there. It's a, there's a second screen and I can see that a lot of people are already attending, which makes me very happy, of course. Um, if I look to this side, don't need to wonder, I'm Lisa, looking at Lisa at this side. <laughs> So yeah, like Lisa said, thank you very much for joining the session. I'm glad you're here. Today, it's all about document automation. And we are going to do a lot of different applications for document automation, while at the same time using just one service, Docs42. We can already pretty much tell you that it's not about to start, but we are starting. One last thing, um, Eric has said this, Lisa has said this as well. There is a chat in, on, in your panel. If you want to try this, just tell us that our sound is fine. Um, if you can hear us, just say yes. So you already see that this is working. And also for us, it's nice to know that the chat is already working. Perfect. We just received from someone that they can't hear us. Okay. I hope it's resolved by now. If someone could also please just confirm in the chat if they can hear. Okay. Someone just said they can hear. Okay. So I think we're fine. Please Perfect. also check your audio settings. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Then let's jump into it. What is Docs42 and what is the document automation part about? Well, generally, Docs42 is an innovative way of generating documents. And it's something that um, has been requested in the finance and operations in BC, in CRM for a lot of time. So what we can do is we can design documents in Office, Word, 
Excel, and PowerPoint. At the same time, you can output or integrate that with the application you're used to. So for the user, it's not really a big difference. You are in CE, you're in BC, you're in finance and operations, but the documents are designed in, like I said, Office. And the good thing is if somebody knows document design in finance and operations, they can use the same know-how to do the same thing in CE, for example. Now, yeah, we're originally from, originally from Vienna, so um, all the rest from, from Austria. And we're currently working with around 350 customers and 85 partners, where most of them are still within the DAC region, so Central Europe, but we are expanding. So we already have installations all around the globe. And with, of course, in initiatives like this, we are trying to make the brand aware also on other sites. And something that already works with really, really big customers and installations of multiple thousands of users can already, of course, work geographically somewhere else. Some of those reference customers you see down below, so the German railway is one of them, probably leap here in terms of manufacturing so, um, is, is also a, a, brand, a brand, a name. And for those that don't know the others, there are um, the biggest retailers in Germany among them. There are the biggest universities among them, but that's also important. We can also service smaller customers. So if you have a scenario where you're only four or five users, that's fine as well. About document generation, well, the challenges or what it is, we had a look at this, and this is the way we saw document generation in many, many organizations before they started with Docs42. And you're probably familiar with some of the scenarios. Uh, I'm just checking if there's any questions. No, it seems to be fine. It's just sort of blinking. That should be fine. Perfect. All right, back to document generation. So. Copy pasting is something we've all done, right? It's something we have been doing for a very long time. We've all saved that V37 underscore final somewhere. And the bad part about this is it was very, very error prone, um, not because of bad working, but because you copied the old text, there might've been an error there. And for worst of all, it takes a lot of time. So for me, for example, if I generate like a, a contract or if I generate um, some invoices or, con or quotes, um, if I do that in the evening, it's not the perfect time for me to spend, to be honest. So I'd rather have it automated and spend time with my family. So copy pasting is something we can reduce. Then another scenario that we see with a lot of organizations is of course the macro expert. We have all known the macro expert, right? And the good thing is it's automated. The bad thing is if that person that knows the macros leaves the organization at any point, um, will it just be for, for short leave? Will it be for vacation? Or even if they leave the entire organization, nobody knows how they work anymore. And it's really bad since, well, nobody will be able to do the automation based on that. So if you have new ideas, new potential, you cannot do it. And something, if you work with dynamics, you've probably seen in some of the applications, there are like the real application scenarios of document automation where everything is done in IT. And if it's done in IT only, then, well, it's not necessarily the core competency of IT to be able to design something. It's something that can be done in the business units, that can be done in the marketing units. And when we bring this to the Microsoft platform, what options are there out of the box? That's the one we have. So we, of course, have the very, very individual one where it takes a lot of time, like doing everything copy-pasting in Microsoft Office. Then there are some semi-automated versions where you can do mail merge, where you can do macros, or if you want to work with SSRS or SQL Server reporting services, that's perfectly automated in your finance and operations, in your AX or any SQL data. But still, if you want to do something that looks as cool as something that Office can produce, it, there's no chance to merge them. And even if we go ahead with, with the apps and with the chances you already have within electronic reporting with the power apps, um, still, the power of them to combine the, both, of, both of them is not there yet. The good news is we can leverage the both of them. So we have the add-in part on the one hand side where you can design those documents in Microsoft Office, but it's also a server, so you can do automation. And that server is, of course, not necessarily being an on-premise service. We will look in this later, so everything can already be in the cloud as well. That's fine as well. When it comes to document generation, uh, if, you, if you think about any project you've done about document generation lately, 
or in the past, or maybe you haven't done projects yet, but you think about the process. Usually the challenges is bringing different business units together while each of them has to do with something that's in their core competency. And that's, well, of course, if you look at IT, it is going to be about data integration. You want in, for example, CE, in finance and operations, you want to get the right data at the right time. And in best case, if you support the people that the data actually helps them because you can then do automatic document automation, this could then also help you for Power BI if you want to do some calculations on that. From the business perspective, of course, you want to have the right document at the right time with the right information. But still, if, for example, you want to change something, you don't want to run to IT all the time because it's just text, for example, then it would be handy to do this in Word, right? From a marketing perspective, you want to look at the CI. You want to have the right logo, the right images, and generate the right document for the business users. So if each of them can do this in Office or in the desired application in terms of the IT, then we have a slim process at the end of the day for document automation the way you want it to be. And this is how it looks. Um, so on the left-hand side, you see blue data fields, Docs42 data fields. And yeah, wh wherever you see this, Docs42 is involved. Those blue fields can come from many, many different data sources. We will have a look on this in a second. And on the right-hand side, of course, you see the document that's generated usually within the application. So we have many, many live demos today in all the different applications. And you will see how we generate that from CE, from BC, and of course, finance and operations and SharePoint. I mentioned the data sources we can integrate. And first of all, yeah, there are a lot of different data sources you can integrate. So you can use this for CE, for finance and operations, for dynamics generally. You can use this for web services, SQL-based data, SharePoint as well. But the most important part about this is you can also combine this. And if we think about the current strategy Microsoft is working on, so kind of reducing the boundaries of dynamics. So we want, like it used to be just AX or just NAP or just GP. Well, nowadays you want to combine some data because something might be done in a marketing initiative with a campaign that's done in, in, in CRM, of course, but for ERP data, you have some information in finance and operations. And with that trend of using the best from all the application, that's perfectly how we are aligned. So you can take all the data from all the dis different systems, merge the data. Like for example, if you have product sheets in SharePoint that link to a product that is in finance and operations, you can do that with the combination of Docs42. The good part is not only the input is very flexible, but also the output. So after a document is generated, you will be able to open it directly in the browser as an office format, as a PDF format, which comes very handy. If, for example, you, you, you do quotes like we would do in a second, and for 80% of the quotes, you know the PDF is perfectly fine, but there's your one favorite customer and you want to output a Word document because you will still want to note, add a personal note, both is possible. Well, then, of course, save that document to SharePoint. So if you want to stay digitally in the desired applications and in the Microsoft ecosystem, generate your documents from CE and automatically save it to SharePoint directly with the metadata, with all the information you need. Well, we will also see Teams. So since SharePoint and Teams are linked together, of course, you can also use Teams. You can send mails automatically. Um, you can even generate draft emails. So let's say from CE, you know you will send out the quote and you still want to add a personal note, but not in the quote, but in the email, you can generate a draft email and then after send it out. Yeah, then there's of course the rest, like where you can do printing, text messages, images, HTML outputs. Um, if somebody of you uses SQL as a database, you can then also output document as a blob. And both input and output, we have custom data sources. So, well, data source for the input, custom output action for the output. So in case there's still something like a digital signature that's not there out of the box, that's something you can still integrate. We've mentioned in the very beginning that Docs42 is flexible in terms of if it's just used within your system, within an on-premise system, or alternatively, you can also have it hosted by us, and that's called Docs42 Online. With Docs42 Online, we have an Azure hosted as SaaS. Um, well, could probably a, a little German pronunciation, but it's a SaaS. <laughs> um, Anyway, the most important part is you don't need to care about installation. You don't need to care about updates. You get the service, you integrate it into Azure Active Directory, and in there you can use it with 
full impersonation with service user with all the rights that are maintained in Azure Active Directory. So no additional maintaining and higher security standard. Yeah, the only limit to this is 100,000 documents a month. So if you, I hope for you that it's invoices because if you generate 100,000 invoices at the moment, depending of course on the volume, but your organization should be perfectly fine. <laughs> One organization that is using Docs42 in their sales and service platform is ABB. So they, like many, many customers, started with one scenario, which in their case was a sales scenario, but then switched to many, many more within the organization. And that's the story we get a lot with Docs42. And, and if you think about the way document generation used to be, it usually was branded to one scenario. But if you think about your entire organization, and if you think about the, all the business processes you have, in terms of HR, in terms of sales, that's the same way you can grow like it did with ABB. And if you start with sales, that's perfectly fine. If you start with HR, maybe that's your pain. But then at the end of the day, all of them can leverage the same resource and generate the document. So much about the, the talking in the beginning. Um, let's go ahead with the live demo. Yes. Let's jump into the live demo. So much about the theory, now the practice. <laughs> so I mentioned in the beginning, we prepared a lot for you today and that's not a lie. So here's the agenda of what we're gonna focus on in the next minute. I'll start with C365 CE and I'm gonna generate a sales quote and a sales proposal presentation as well. So you see that those possibilities. Then I'll do the same in Microsoft Teams and in Power Automate. I'll also of course show you the template design. So what Johannes has shown you uh, in his slides, uh, you will see live how, how all of that is set up. Then finance and operations is following an invoice scenario there that is followed by a really nice and appealing looking job quote from VC. And in the end, if there's enough time left, we'll also generate some HR documents from SharePoint. Um, great, that's the agenda. Let's get Started, but first some expectation settings about the CE um, demo. Next slide, please. Yeah, so in our scenario about D365 CE and in Microsoft Teams, we have a few people involved. First, we have the account manager, he's called Claudius Cloud, and we have the team manager, Selena Bentley, and they are both selling solar panels, so they're working at Solar Power Deluxe and they're working on a customer case with Michaela. Michaela is the customer and she wants to receive a sales proposal and then also a sales quote, of course, because he's really interested in purchasing those, um, um, uh, those solar panels. The, what is our company using? We're using D365 CE for all the customer and project information. We're also using SharePoint because usually a whole team is involved in the project. We have a lot of different documents that we also want to attach to our quote. So that's where we use SharePoint. And then of course for collaboration, especially now we're working from home from different offices. It's always good to have Microsoft Teams. So we use that as well to collaborate. And for document generation, there is Docs42. And then with all of those data sources and with Docs42, we're gonna generate those documents and send them to Michaela also by email. And we will have a P, uh, PPTX and also a PDF. Great, that's how it's gonna look like. And I will sh start sharing my screen. Yeah, and you should be able to see my Dynamics CE right now. Great. So we are within an, an, a sales quote within Dynamics CE. As I mentioned, we're selling solar panels and here we have all the information. The owner is, is Johannes here, the potential customer's adventure CEO. We have Michaela Mitterweit as the customer and we have three products here, solar panels, panel holder and the battery. He even have some amounts, like a discount of 5%. To show that it's live data, I'm just gonna update that to 20%, and we're gonna be nice today to our customer, 20% for them. And that's the information we have within CE. However, it's a big and complex project. It's not gonna be enough to write a quote where we just state those three, three products, and that's it. 
a whole project team was involved with a lot of documents, like someone from the technical team, marketing, and so on. That's why we decided to set up a folder within SharePoint where all our employees can upload their documents and we will then later on um, integrate within our quote. So here we have our quote ID from CRM. And then if I go to my SharePoint, I have a folder here with the same, uh, with the same quote ID. And then here I have some documents. And now let's have a look at those documents. The first document here is a Word document. It's like a cover letter. So something, if there are even enough sunshine out where the customer is located, if solar panels make sense with some nice pictures integrated to make it look appealing for the customer. Then the second document is a PowerPoint presentation. So it's a connection plan that should be integrated as well. So the technical folks can see. Then we have an Excel. So besides the products, we're also selling services. Someone needs to install it. And our technical guys, they are not too much in into CRM. They can't, they don't put put everything there. The, the, those products are not set up, so they just set up an Excel. And here they have the hours and rates. And I can even work on that as well. I can say it's going to be 12 hours instead of 15, and it's there. And then we also have here another document, which is an advertisement, a small incentive from our marketing, so to get Michaela really into the purchase interest stage. Good, that's all the documents involved, but now me as the salesperson, I don't want to um, copy paste it all together. I don't want all of that manual effort. I just go into my CE, to my quote, and then I go here to generate documents. And here I have a lot of different options and I'm gonna start that I want to return the quote as PDF. So what's happening in the background now is that Docs42 is pulling the template which, we, which I'm going to show you later. It's inserting the data from uh, CRM, from CE, from SharePoint, and in that case, it returned the document to me. So here I have my document for Adventure CEO. I'm just, I'm even gonna do it like this so we can compare our custom here, Adventure CO, so here we have it as well. Here we even have a Swiss QR code added, so if someone's joining from Switzerland, that's possible with Docs42 as well. Um, and then down here, we have our first document that was added, our first document integrated into my, uh, into my uh, quote. And then here, the solar panel, panel holder battery, our table, that's a dynamic table, by the way, was inserted to the 20% discount, which I've updated, is here and of course perfectly calculated as well. This was the Excel document, which I've shown you, also updated to the 12 hours. And then down here, we have the PowerPoint presentation and we also have the other Word document. So for the end user, it was just one click and it's a really appealing, um, quote document with all the information that's important about the project. Um, and that's usually um, a preview way. So the salesperson is previewing the PDF if everything's okay. And if they're fine, they can say, okay, I want to save my quote to SharePoint. Um, so what's happening now is the same document is generated again and Docs42 is storing it automatically to SharePoint. While that is loading, I'm also gonna show you the draft email action as well, so they can set up a draft email. I'm gonna let that load, and here I have, I'm in my SharePoint, um, and I can go to my sales quotes then. Let's give it some time. I'm gonna first show you the draft email that was generated here with Docs42. So I clicked on draft email and here we say we see that it's directly for Michaela. We have an email address. I could even um, write some more information. You are the best customer, for example. So it's dynamic as well on all of the email context, context to the email body because that was designed with Docs42 as well. This was actually a word template and then generated as an email. And in the attachment, I have my sales quote for Adventure CO um, here again, the same 
document added. Good. And then I'm going back to my browser. And just reloading here. And now here we have our quote solar panels that was generated by me about a minute ago. Just open it, it for you to see that it's also the same document generated and saved and even with some metadata so you can also dynamically write metadata and what we see here that there's also a second document so what has happened in the background while i changed the information about the quote a power automate was triggered automatically in the background regenerated my document and stored it for me within my sharepoint library with all the updated information so here i have the same document and everything updated also with my 20% discount. Good. And also for the ones that are interested in seeing the Power Automate, the flow, how it's set up, just quickly, we've set up if whenever a quote is modified, then Docs42 should be called and the document uh, should be stored to SharePoint. So that's a possibility, but of course, you don't need to use Power Automate like the first document I've shown you here was created without it. Good, and since we're already here, and before we, before I'm gonna jump into the second scenario where I'm gonna generate a, a presentation, I'm first gonna show you how the template design looks like for our quote, for exactly our quote. So what we have is uh, we integrate with SharePoint Online. So we, you've seen that we had da uh, data from CE, we had data from SharePoint, and we also store and manage our templates within SharePoint Online. So here I have my, my SharePoint and I have my SharePoint library. This is the for sales templates. And here I have all my Docs42 CE templates stored. And now if I scroll down, I'm gonna look for my template, which is the sales quote, and I'm opening that one in my app. And for you to see how the template setup looks like with Docs42 within uh, Microsoft Word. By the way, a template design is possible within Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint with, with Docs42. So, and then I'm just quickly logging in here to get all my permissions. Okay. So, and I think I'm just going to reopen again. So, to make sure everything runs smoothly. Try once more. So, I'm um, logging in because I'm downloading from SharePoint the Word document, so the templates are normal docx documents, and then there's always a second file which is the data connection, the data map, which is also stored on, uh, on the SharePoint. And yeah, one second, I'm just gonna try once more, so just opening it again in the app and once more the download. So now you're familiar with it, how it looks like. Yeah, um, we, we just did this for, for the live purpose, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so you trust it's actually live demo. Exactly. It's always good for people to see that it's actually live what you're doing. And I know you know my email address by heart. So if you have questions, you can always write to that email address, <laughs> which you see here. Good, and now we should be fine. We're not, maybe we should, we could show it otherwise with, with another with another template later on. Yeah, oh, your perfectly, or maybe let me just open mine for the well, moment. You can so we, we, it's nice to have a voice change, right? <laughs> <laughs> so let me just quickly open my template for the, for the moment. All right. So I'm just going to 
Share my camera. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> Just a quick switch. Great, and should I give you the screen right? Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't yeah. start sharing my screen yet. Wait. All right, there we go. I'll just go ahead with the with the template design. All right. Um, so as you've seen That's already, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. So the, the document he said, as I've already shown you, um, is something we have, have designed in, in Office, in Microsoft Word, in this case. And directly in the document, if we click on any of those fields, you will be able to see that they are coming from different entities. So, for example, the sales code, like the name, is coming from the organization. And we will also show you how to build up that tree in terms of the, of the data. If we click on generate on top, it will then take my user to read whatever codes I already have available in the CE. So, there is the solar panels that we've already seen. If we click on generate up here, This will then take, of course, all the data Lisa has already shown you. So it will take data from SharePoint. It will take data from Dynamic CE. And then at the end of the day, me as the one designer, like I switched, where well, we switched persona kind of, like I was the one, uh, I'm, I'm, now I'm the, the designer. And being the designer, I can test this also locally, which is very, very powerful in terms of like being able to test doc documents in Word, because usually you need to set up everything on the server yet. this. Theoretically, also works standalone without any server installation at all. All right, so let's just view them side by side. There we are. And you will be able to see what happened with the data on, well, the, the right-hand side is what, what the, the template looks like, and the left-hand side, you will see what the already generated code looks like, and you've seen this like a couple of times now. And the same, of course, approach to what you see is what you get, you also get in the add-in directly. So if we scroll down, you, for example, in here, you see the entire Word document we've seen, and there are type definitions, and those type definitions can be, well, very, very few um, examples. And of course, all of these, and so if we take a look, we can have a number, date time integrated, image integration, barcodes automatically generated, image maps, so that's conditions on images. And we can integrate entire PDFs, PDFs attachments, so even in the quality of a PDF. So for example, the PDF as a as the terms and condition would be on a central location, we would be able to integrate them all the time. Then if we scroll down further, there are also options like HTML, hyperlinks, something that's, um, well, that makes it even more convenient for the user if there's, for example, like a link in the document. But most of all, most of all, there is the Word doc like we've just integrated. And if we scroll down, we will see something similar um, in the very end of that document. But in the meantime, there is also a repetition of a table. Something that's very, very handy with Word is that it's, for example, also possible to populate the header to the next page because it's simply a page break. And that's something Docs for the Duke and out of the box. We will also see this in finance and operations. So no need more anymore to think about programming. And then that's the Excel we've seen. So and also the changes Lisa has done. We see that here. There is the PowerPoint presentation. And at the end, there is also our summer deal. So you get a special or something. All right, then let me just have a quick look on the data mapping. And in here, we see many, many different data sources. Um, some of them are out of the box. Some of them we will see later on in live demos and the other ones as well, like finance and operations, also BC, of course. And that's the part where all the magic happens, basically. So you combine all the different data sources, you mix them, you, well, for those people of you that really enjoy data, <laughs> that's the perfect place to be, like we do. And let's just open one of the CE data sources. Um, so in the connection, for example, I don't want to go into too much detail here. The most important information is just, you can either work with user or you can work with Azure Active Directory. Now those fields that you see here, and that's something that's coming from an, a, a configuration file. For those of you who are familiar with it, of course you can just type anything you want in there. 
and just need the information. All of this, of course, is also documented. So in case you already have an idea of Azure Active Directory, we have a documentation for this. In case you don't, just paste your CRM URL here, use your username here, use your password here, and you're good to go and connect to the data like we've already done. And if I click on connect, you will get a successfully connected and select any of the entities you need for that very document. Yeah, we have the code, and then you can select the fields, you can filter them. Um, like if, for example, in here we have the quote ID should be equal to, uh, what we get here is what we call an input parameter. And in that input parameter, basically that the, the prompt that we got in the beginning, that's the input parameter, so it's matching those IDs. The good thing is here you could also match to IDs that are coming from finance and operations from BC, so then they would merge, would be merged here. Cool. Well, right. and there were a few questions in between that fit oh, yeah. in here um, quite good. So one of them was was how do you insert, how do you link images to the document? Ah, perfect question. So it depends if it is an a, an image that's already within CRM or if it is an image that you have in some path. If it is an image within CRM then all you need to do is like we have the entity image here. So that image is coming from one of the entities. And as you see here, it's an entity image. We define it as a type and we also include some pixels. But theoretically, if this would link to some path that could be in SharePoint, SharePoint Online, all we need is the directory to this in here. And then we'll be able to even insert images that are in different data sources. Hope that answers the question. Um, Top of the questions already. Yeah. And yes, exactly. Um, Lisa, also thank you for your question. Um, exactly. So um, the question was, um, if um, so, so the quote is generated from Dynamics 365 and saved in as a, as a document into SharePoint. Um, what part of this is automated? Um, is it the template? Yes, of course, it is first of all the template where all the data is linked, but at the same time you get the data like we do here with all the complexity, with all the linking, but at the same time you also get the flexible output action into SharePoint with the metadata from CE. Yeah, and if you have data from somewhere else, you can of course combine this. All right, well, so much for the questions so far. If there are any more, like you see, just don't hesitate to post them and we can answer them directly. Good. I'm just thinking, is there anything else about the template yet? Mm, I think we've basically done the most important parts. Um, next off, we will see a PowerPoint generation. Exactly. So I'm switching off my camera again. So what Johannes has shown you right now within Word is also possible to design within PowerPoint. So um, I'm going to show you now an example, a sales proposal generated from Dynamics uh, CE which has a PowerPoint template in the background. So I'm back to sharing my screen. And back in my CE, and I'm going to my opportunities in that case. So that quote scenario is I have an opportunities. And I also have, because it's quite fits the scenario, my solar panels proposal in here um, with some information again coming from CE and some information again coming from SharePoint. So here's solar panels proposal, the same customer, Michaela. We have the same products that are integrated, the panel holder, battery and the solar panel. We have some text about the current situation and what we propose. So you should be quite familiar with those fields if you work a lot within CE. So that's the opportunity form. And then we have Claudius. Cloud is the owner. So now I want to generate the proposal for Michaela. And what I first do is I can even here, I could choose if I want to have the PowerPoint generated or the PDF. And I'm gonna start with the PowerPoint and I'm just quickly logging back in. And now in that case, it again pulls my template that is stored within SharePoint. And I can actually show you here, I have my four sales templates. And here we have a proposal template, which is a PowerPoint. It's pulling that and inserting all my information. So here I have my proposal document. And here we can already see, if you look closely, 
that um, even the name is dynamic. So it's proposal, solar panels, proposal. So that's, that's what it's called like. And here I have my presentation for Michaela. Here the picture of Claudius was inserted. In that case, Claudius picture comes from SharePoint. Here we have our products from um, CE integrated, some reference customers logos coming from CE, down here the need to propose solution and so on. And here we had a repetition on slides. So what we said in the setup of the template was okay, depending on how many different products are added to that proposal, please add a separate slide for, for each, doc, uh, for each uh, product. And here we have the solar panel, we have the panel holder and the battery. And even here, we can see that the 20% discount is also here what we've changed beforehand in the system. So we are a fan of having the truth in the system, change it and adjust your data where the truth is in, in the data source and then later on generate your documents with it. Here, once again, a, power, a PowerPoint inserted also in the document and the slide for Claudius Cloud. Great, Claudius thinks this is a really great presentation. So what, and now he wants to inform Michaela about it. So what he does is he goes here and then he says, send the email to Michaela. So now it's generating the document, uh, the, the presentation. And beforehand, I just generated um, an, a draft email. But in that case, right now, I really generated an email and send it directly to Michaela using Docs42. And I'm gonna check Michaela's inbox. I'm just gonna refresh. And that was already a good sound. Michaela's document is uh, here, of course, the corporate identity here with the logo, with the picture of cloud. It's also in the email, as I mentioned before, it also the email can be designed with Docs42. And in the attachment, we have the PowerPoint. And so here, once again, now one cool thing about that is, we talked about collaboration in the beginning and how important that is. If I now go to my Teams and in my sales channel, I had a new notification because that email was not only sent to Michaela, it was also sent to my Teams channel. So everyone's informed on what has really happened with the project. And now I could do the same. I just show you quickly. I'm going to say, hi, I can even tag Johannes because he's also part here. I'm generating my quote for Michaela from Teams. I can inform him because what I've done in CE and what I've shown you in CE is also possible within Teams. So all the integration of all the different systems is possible with Docs42. Uh, and Johannes says it's the best thing ever. <laughs> so you can see it's live. It's really cool. He receives a heart. That's only for the special comment. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. In the meantime, we've also received a question. Can we have a user-defined template? Uh, would, it, would we need to add it to a SharePoint folder? The question would be, is user-defined user per user, person user, or like per user, like an organization user? Generally, yes, the, the user is an information we pass to Docs42, so you could have some specifics. In most cases, for example, like if, if user defined means you want to change the logo or if you want to change um, like the header, this can be very dynamic. So we can even have like headers and footers in different Word documents, and those would be specific for a document or for a user. If that already has, answers the question, um, let us know. If not, as I ask the question again, or I ask something that's still missing. Right. Good. Then I'll quickly explain how everything works in Teams. So first of all, I have of course my integration with SharePoint, so I can also adjust my quote module, all my different documents. I can adjust them directly from here as well. So if you remember the Excel which I've adjusted in the beginning, I have it open here in Teams. So I could just say, okay, this is 14 hours. And then I, then I go back and I'm just solar panels. Here I have my CE, um, my CE overview here. I have my quote and just to show you that it works the same way. I have my button in here and then I can return the PDF quote 
and my document will be ready in the second, same screen, all within Teams. And then, of course, whenever I set store my document automatically to SharePoint, the document can automatically be stored to Teams as well. So here I have my ready document. And in my sales quotes, you can see I can open it from here. I have my documents as well. Good. And so much about CE and Teams. Let's use the time and go to finance operations. Yeah. Johannes, it's yours again. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. So we've had a, an add to that question. Yeah, like we, um, so if I understand correctly, you want to add like an image, for example, or the user information to a template like we had in the email, but in the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, of course, you can read the user. Like, for example, if that user is, is um, in, in CRM, when you want to get the images for that user, you would include this. So it would be like, if I send the quote to you, you would have my image, my contact details, et cetera. That's no problem. We just need to have a look on the time. <laughs> it's progressing very, very quick. So let me just share my screen quickly. All right, there we go, show my screen. Now, very, very similar to what we've seen in CE, we can now do in finance and operations. And if I just, like in this case, we're doing a sales invoice, but that works for all the reports. We'll see the setup in a second. If I click on original preview here, this will then trigger again Docs42 for document generation. In the same SharePoint library where we've just changed the template for CE, we can also open the finance and operations template. So in there, you can also change anything on the document like we've done. We'll open this in a second. So again, a document that looks very familiar to what we've already seen, repetition of, of products, the header, the tables that look nice, and even page breaks with switch to from portrait to landscape, and of course, images. Well, that image is even a sub-document, so that is a, a document that can be maintained by the sales unit, and they will then include a nice offer in that very document. The setup of this, generally speaking, to technically integrate that, you will need um, integration with lifecycle services where you upload a deployable package and then you will have this as the setup. And in here, there are some technical details which we are happy to go into detail with you in a meeting, but there are the reports, which is the most important part. And in the reports, for example, we've already set up our sales invoice. And in that sales invoice, if we click on the report setup, we will see that this again links to a SharePoint document. And again, the Dynamics 365 site finance and operations templates. So as you've seen in that site already, we have the finance and operations templates here as well. And same procedure, I can go there, I can open this, I can log in, and then based on my login, I will also be able to test this. So if I just click, like you've seen, blue fields, insert data field, feel free to add the data there. And you here, again, see the same tree, but in this case, not the e-data, but finance and operations data. Once again, if it's not clear yet, those can have finance and operations and C combined, of course. And if I click on generate, I will generate the very same document I've just printed from the, from the system. And you can combine finance and operations reports with entity data. Depends on the scenario, if it makes sense to rather have it in the data provider or in the entity. Also something we can discuss in the, in, in the meeting together. And again, you see here that there is the same document that we have as an output, this time from finance and operations, and also testable locally. In the SharePoint library, there is not only the sales code we've seen in the CE sample, so there's also the finance and operations documents. And we've enabled an archive in finance and operations to be automatically saving those documents directly into SharePoint as well. Now, the good part about this is also there's SharePoint standard functionality as a versioning history. And if we go to the modified, you see the newest ones are, is the one I created three minutes ago. And you can also output documents as a doc in case you want that doc, docx. So it could still be changed. Of course, it doesn't make sense with the invoice, but generally there are documents where this might make sense. We've had the request recently for this, and that's the way to go. The setup for this, you can also see that there is a invoice ID that gets put here. There's again the invoicing names, also metadata automatically saved to SharePoint. Now, if we go back to finance and operations, 
in here you will see there is what we call an archive setup and in that archive setup we've already defined a printer setup and that printer setup will define it as a document that is safe to SharePoint with dynamic and where you can define a file format. The putting the metadata into that document is very similar. Um, with my question was the cost to enable this functionality. It's probably best, so the general licensing is add-in and server, but probably best if you get in touch with us directly and then we can send you the price list. Okay, um, there we are with the different file formats that we can output. So if I change this to docx, for example, like Word here, it would then output the doc as a document. That's so much for the for the archive setup. One thing that usually doesn't really come to mind, but people have been asked for a lot, long, long time, is to create documents based on entities. And that's something we can do. So if we jump back to the docs for the two parameters, there is not only a report setup, but also a data entity setup. And in that data entity setup, we'll see on the vendor list, we have a report with docs42. Now the data, data entity setup is the same way as it's been with the reports. Again here, linking to a SharePoint document. And of course this document, again, being saved in our finance and operations templates folder, where we would be able to change it as the vendor fact sheet. In finance and operations, again, if I don't know nothing about docs42, the only thing I will see is if I go to all my vendors here, seems like we have a lot of vendors. <laughs> <laughs> and I can select any of these, then we have a new button up here and that one is going to, for example, on the screen, generate a new document, in this case, if for the, for the data entity, there is no report involved, it's just the data entity, and we're getting an output of, in this case, if anybody lives in Berlin, we have the details of the Finanzamt Berlin. <laughs> usually not somebody who, um, well, Finanzamt, usually you have to pay, right? You don't get a lot. But in any case, so we get that document. I'm seeing my resources get limited on the webinar and the cloud, but it, it will be there in a second, and that's the same way we can output those documents. You could, um, if you if you'd hear my my laptop, you'd hear my van moving around like super hot. There we are. With again, as a as a, if anybody of you is from a marketing unit, and you think about having those implemented based on the corporate um, identity, and the CI will look like this for every document. That if you want to change it, it's just an image on SharePoint. Change that image. It's changed everywhere after. Cool, so much for finance and operations. Next off, VC. Yes, so next part, uh, quick introduction on document generation from VC. And I'm gonna share my screen. So now we're in the VC environment at our scenario, here is that we show you a, a job quote. So I'm gonna go here in my PC and I go to jobs. I'm gonna look for my jobs. And I have three jobs here. One is for conference room. I can even open it to show you some more details about it. So it's for the School of Fine Arts. The Megan is our customer. And here is some description on uh, what's, what's gonna be offered within a job quote. And now I can go here to report and I could say preview job quote to show you how it would look like in the standard of BC, such a job quote. And let's see, we, will, we see it's not a really nice and appealing looking document. It's really, it's just one table, the um, font, uh, color and like the, the font size, it's not really the most modern one. So corporate identity, forget about it. And to show you in comparison how the document looks like generated with Docs42, the only difference is here you go to Docs42 Actions and then you click on Docs42 Job Quote. And now Docs42 is generating the document with the data from BC. And I think in our scenario, in that case, it's data from BC, the Job Quote from BC. And we're also integrating 
products that are stored on CE. So once again, we show that we are the document generation platform where we integrate data from, from various sources. And if I open that one, I can see, so here's the picture for Megan, cool of fine art addressed to her with some nice pictures here even the team is is uh, integrated on that that's working on that document here the table compared to the other one you've seen before much nicer looking here that table that those are pictures coming from ce here we even have something in landscape mode and here this is how the job should look like in the end and we can see a table here that's not at uh, we can see a chair that's not at the table i'm going to change that in a second to show you down here, uh, we have the terms and conditions. Um, well, actually, I think I'm going to show you some more details if you come up directly to us um, <laughs> <laughs> after the that webinar. I think, yeah, I think it's better like that so we can even answer your questions. Perfect. Good. But so much about BC and giving back to Johannes. Last off, we have SharePoint. All right. So, well, believe it or not, from everything you've seen so far, we leveraged the same Docs42 service, and yeah, so can so can you do. But the last part we want to do is also generation from SharePoint. Let's just generate a simple PDF list first. So this is going to do a repetition around all the employees in that. We have the same thing with PowerPoint. like we do here. And of course, if I do any of the standard selecting or if I want to have this larger to smaller and then select all of them, do the same thing again. I can of course save it. Okay, we can do a similar PDF, a, a PPTX to what uh, Lisa's shown you in CE. Um, yeah, and it's going to dynamically use whatever data you select. So being very flexible on this. There we go. Perfect. And then lastly, we've promised you an HR scenario. So there are some employees that we want to hire. In this case, today I'm going to hire myself. Yay. <laughs> How much salary are you going to get to? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I need to negotiate with myself. But in here, you again see a lot of different options. If you already work with DocuSign, that's out of the box integrated to be sent out. Then, well, the others we've mostly seen, but just for a quick show, Let's just open this in, in as a PDF directly again. Again, you see, also in terms of performance, um, it seems like they didn't steal my resources here. And we have a nice looking contract that again is a complex document with a lot of blue fields with data coming from everywhere. And that's the combination again of a lot of different options. At the end of the day, well, let's just have a look back to our slides. Um, the Q&A is, of course, still feel free to post anything. Let's just quickly summarize what we've seen today. So, well, of course, we've seen a great scenario with CE integration. So if you do document with CE, feel free to contact us. We're happy to do a demo with you. If you do the same thing for finance and operations, or if you even combine them, feel free. We are there and do a free and individual demo with you. We can even do a free workshop. That's an offer we have. So one hour free workshop. We should look at your documents and then generate those together and, and have a look on them. Um, we're getting a question. Um, it seems like the email, email is not correct, correct. for somebody. Okay. Can you email me directly or Lisa directly? And we can then help you with setting up the testing. Also, if you if you send out the email, feel free to to add the technology you want to use it with, because then we can then already provide you with everything. Oh, there's another feedback we get. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's always it, if if you want to have a look around. Um, that's how you do webinars nowadays. <laughs> 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 so short impression also from the other side <laughs> um, it was great doing this for you yeah. also thank you lisa it was really fun doing that today yes thank you for so many people for joining and yeah we would be happy to receive some emails either to info or to our personal email addresses let us know that you joined the webinar 
which um, um, technology you're using. Always happy to hear some feedback on your project. Yeah. All right, Eric, do you want to speak the last and final words? Thank you very much. You guys did an excellent job. It was very interesting. Covered all the whole dynamic stack as well as Microsoft SharePoint. And it was fantastic. Thank you very much for briefing us. Thank you for contributing to the community. Thank you for helping out. With that, we will uh, end the session. Thank you. Great. Have a Great. nice day. And have a nice day. All the best. Bye-bye.